Permanent actions. Permanent actions is referring to the weight of the structural and non-structural components fixed in positions, such as the wall, floor, roof, ceiling, permanent partitions, and others. This action is expected to act on the structure at a constant magnitude throughout the service life of the structure. It can be estimated from the mass or the density of the relevant material or type of the constructions. The density of different types of materials are given in Eurocode 1 part 1 in the list of the table here. The permanent actions is obtained by multiplying the density given with the estimated volume per unit area of the structure. These are some examples of the tables given in the Eurocode 1 part 1 for different types of the materials. The densities given are usually in the form of kilonewton per meter cube. This table shows the summary of the weight of the construction material which is commonly used in the reinforced concrete structure. Next, we look into the variable actions. It is basically the impulse load or life load, which is attributed to the intended use or purpose of the structure and all other external impulse load that may reasonably be assumed to act on the structure during its lifetime. The recommended variable actions are given in the list here. For general use, we refer to the Eurocode 1 part 1. Other than that, there are snow loops, wing loops, accidental loops, and also traffic loops. To determine the impulse load, or more specifically termed as the variable actions, first we need to know the categories of the variable actions. The category of the variable actions is being clearly outlined in Eurocode 1 part 1 from A to H. Category A refers to the usage for the residential buildings, B for office area, C is referring to the area where people may congregate, D is for the shopping area, E for industrial usage and storage, F and G for traffic and parking area, H, I, K are for the roof. For more details, you may read between the lines to determine the category of the variable actions. This is important so that you do not underestimate the variable actions. In Eurocode 1, the variable actions is given in two types of unit, which can be in the form of uniform distributed load or in the form of concentrated load. The uniform distributed load appear in kilonewton per meter square per unit area and the concentrated load appear as kilonewton as a point load. Their value respective to their categories are being listed in the table. The values are normally given in the form of the range, which you can decide freely within the range whether you want it to be conservative or economical depending on your experience. You see there are underlines value. The underlines means that is the recommended value by the Eurocode. At the given range, 
If you are not sure you would like to go for a more conservative value or more economical value, you can always go for the recommended values. Unless there are other special considerations, which at the design stage you know that the application may go beyond the typical usage of the specific structure, then you may decide to go for a more conservative value. As for the impulse load for the roof, specifically the category H, the roof which is non-accessible except for normal maintenance repair, the impulse value is given as 0.4 kN per meter square or 1 kN. These are the recommended value for the roof structure. If you wish to use a more economical value or some specific value refers to some specific cases, you may refer to the National Annex. The value may differ slightly among different countries. In general, this is the summary of the impulse load or the variable actions for different categories.